Hi, tonight I'm looking at one of these soap dispensers that um, I guess you could use it for sanitizer as well as uh, soap but originally designed for uh, automatic soap dispensing and right now it's just got some water you can probably see uh, there's water up to about here uh, but it doesn't dispense anything so I guess it's more of a mechanical issue than a, an electrical issue and uh, I'll just show you what happens so <laughs> it doesn't dispense anything it'll um, only dispense for a couple of seconds and it shuts off and you have to break the beam again before it'll before it'll uh, dispense so you've got an emitter and sensor at the top and bottom of the machine at a slight angle and um, when you break the, break the beam it's intended to dispense it also has a chime option <laughs> which I've got turned off right now and uh, so right now all we've got in it is just some water and I'm thinking I'm thinking what uh, what has happened is that it's been left for some period of time with just liquid soap in it and the soap has hardened or possibly it was almost empty or empty to the point where there was just a, a small amount of soap and the soap has hardened and clogged the mechanism uh, clogged the pipes so to speak and uh, prevented it from dispensing any longer so <laughs> I know as soon as I take this glass away it's going to start spraying it will dispense oh, okay <laughs> so underneath we've got the dispensing nozzle we've got the emitter or sensor and there's the other unit at the bottom there not 100% sure which is the emitter and which is the sensor but um, I suspect that's the emitter at the bottom and I believe it's infrared and then the sensor is up inside up inside there uh, just below the dispensing nozzle the other hole there is just a screw hole so anyway that uh, appears to be the problem that uh, it won't dispense so I'm gonna take it apart and have a look it's got fresh batteries in by the way um, I could power it off, power it off the uh, variable power supply, but um, it's easier just to put some batteries in while I'm playing around with this thing, because uh, otherwise I've got wires going in the bottom, and it's it's not going to be stable on a on a flat surface, which it is right now. So hopefully um, we can take it apart, and see what's going on. So the first thing I'm going to do is dump this water out dump this water out of here <laughs> dump this water out of here and take the batteries out and uh, then take it apart so I've removed the top there were two screws here and one screw underneath holding the uh, holding the top on and I was a little surprised to find that it's actually belt driven from the motor, I guess I shouldn't really be surprised because they want to. They must have wanted to keep the uh, the liquid away from the motor. So rather than making it um, a little direct drive pump, they've used a couple of belts and pulley wheels to drive the pump mechanism, which I assume is driven on this spindle here. So um, there's a little speaker for the tone that it will make. And this is one of the 
emitters or receivers that it has to uh, sense the hand going underneath and breaking the beam so uh, yeah you can see there's still some soap down there that's um, not washing out so that may have hardened and causing the blockage and uh, there's also an LED of some kind in that white piece that protrudes down into the uh, liquid and that lights up just to indicate that it's active and that's just underneath the pump there so yeah um, I, uh, I think maybe the next part of the process is going to be to extract the pump from the container inside there by taking these uh, three screws out taking the belts off first and remembering where they go which isn't too difficult so that's the uh, the next stage by the way this uses four AAA batteries uh, at the bottom there to power it so it's a six volt device and that's the option for either um, just turning it on or on with uh, chime and off and they're trying to waterproof the switch there which I don't know how effective that is because it looks similar to these um, little solar lights you get outside that uh, often have water ingress and rust rust everything inside and um, so they, the, those switches are not very uh, waterproof uh, as also the top of this doesn't actually have a water seal around it so um, that's not very clever and there was some corrosion on the two screws here that uh, hold the top on and um, so there was some rust down there and you can see the state of those screws are uh, a little rusty the tops are a little rusty the nice clean one here was underneath um, by the sensor under there in the lower hole there so I'm going to pop those screws out I think and uh, take a look see what's going on there I discovered another screw uh, when I, I just taken these belts off and uh, I discovered that underneath this pulley here there's another screw if you can just see it down there if it'll focus maybe maybe not but anyway there's a, a fourth screw down there that I'll be removing so it turned out these screws were different lengths the uh, this one this one and this one were all the shorter screws here and this one turned out to be a longer screw so you can see the difference down there and that one appears to be even slightly longer than the ones that held the the top on so I've got to remember the, uh, the order they came out so next I should be able to have a look at the mechanism here and see what's going on looks like it might be holding this part of the dispensing unit in place as well I might need two hands for this Oh, maybe not. Here we go. So the there's the there's the pump. 
and does have a water seal or liquid seal at the top but there's you can see some liquid has managed to escape and actually get down the side of the motor which isn't good uh, might have to um, take that out and give that a clean but right now we're down to the uh, the dispensing mechanism and I think I'm going to flush this under the tap for a few minutes and uh, maybe that will help to uh, flush any liquids out of it that uh, may have hardened up especially down the bottom there and um, it's interesting that they're using that long drive shaft from the top here all the way down to the bottom there to uh, to pump the liquid out um, I suppose they just didn't use some sort of suction from the top but uh, apparently that's not how they want to do, uh, do it which is uh, quite interesting uh, to use such a long a long drive shaft on that to uh, get the liquid out anyway I'm going to put this seal somewhere safe and uh, give this part a good flush first and then go from there so you can see now when I move the wheel on the end here you can see it's moving some water and some bubbles backwards and forwards depending on which way I turn the wheel so it looks like the blockage has been cleared and uh, there is a gear mechanism in the end which is difficult to uh, to show you but in uh, in the end there you might just see if I manage to turn the this pulley you can just see the the wheels moving or the gears I should say so it uses like a gear mechanism to drive the water there's like a little geared pump that um, drives the fluid up this tube and out of the dispensing nozzle there fairly simple mechanism but if um, if that gets clogged up it's uh, it's a case of dismantling the thing to fix it I guess most people would just throw the thing away and just buy a new one or just not bother and use one of these hand pump uh, dispensers but it's more of a challenge for me to take it apart and try and repair the thing so it looks like uh, we've cleared the blockage and uh, I'm going to reassemble this now and um, try it out see what happens before I do I need to have a quick look at what's going on firstly what's going on down there which looks like some rust I'm not quite sure but it uh, doesn't look very good maybe that will just wash out but what's more important is the rust that's on the side of the motor there which looks like I can just pull the motor out and take a quick look yeah the motor's free to, uh, to come out and there's a little light on the end a little LED that lights up when the motor's activated it's an interesting design oh yeah the motor's um, suffered quite a bit of corrosion on the outside at least so I'm going to clean some of that off but um, maybe put some grease on it to help prevent water ingress into the motor and ruin the motor so at some point it's uh, been contaminated with some liquid of some kind maybe maybe liquid soap maybe just water that's uh, it's got in past the seal 
and cause the problem. Looks like the legs of the LED have uh, suffered somewhat too. <laughs> Looks like uh, they've been, or well, maybe the whole thing was immersed in liquid at some point because that's uh, that's in a pretty bad way. So I'll clean that up a little bit as well before it uh, before I put it back together. You can see where the where it sits down the bottom there. Um, and the hole, the hole itself is uh, got rust around it. So, yeah, the liquid has gone down there and probably stayed down there for a while to cause that corrosion of the LED leg legs. And uh, <laughs> yeah, fairly, fairly basic construction, probably uh, made in China. Um, let's see, oh yeah there we go, <laughs> made in China, surprise surprise, uh, do not immerse in any liquid, yeah right, <laughs> so there's the model number for this thing, EWSD35W, EWSD35W, and it takes four AAA batteries, made in China. Looks like the date code there, 0510, 0510. So I assume that was the uh, 2000, 2010 maybe. Um, fifth month of 2010, or fifth week, 2010 maybe. Come on, focus. Hello. There we go. Household use only. Hmm. Okay, so let me clean this this up, get some of that rust out of there, clean it up, maybe put some grease on the motor and um, get those uh, all that gunk out of there. Not sure about that down there, whether I can move that or not, but it's sitting right down there at the end of the pump, so probably not good to leave it there if I can um, if I can get that out of there. But it might be tricky because it's uh, it, that's going to be a sealed sealed container, so I'm not going to be able to get it get it that very easily unless I use a maybe a long screwdriver with some uh, rag or something wrapped around it. But we'll see what I can do about cleaning that out. Maybe maybe flush it out i'm not sure yet but i'll have to see what happens so it, it looks like what was down there was mainly uh, uh soap that had discolored and maybe um taken on uh some rust but anyway i managed to remove the majority of that and uh with a long screwdriver and some some cloth and uh, I'm pretty sure that's now clear um, I've cleaned that hole up somewhat and uh, gotta make sure that's nice and dry before reinstalling the motor the motor and uh, LED a little better the, <laughs> the LED is suffering somewhat with the the legs of the LED have corroded quite a lot and uh, I could replace that. It's working right now so I'm not going to bother replacing it. Uh, it's, it's hardly worth the, the trouble. Um, I've taken some of this rust off the surface of the motor so that's not too bad. The speaker or sounding device um, looks like that's had some water going either through the back, I expect through the back of the speaker here and uh, that's contaminated the the speaker and probably going to rust the coil um, I doubt whether that's uh, copper but anyway it's um, it's going to corrode that speaker eventually I would imagine come on focus uh, so yeah um, 
that's the current state of it. I'm going to just put things back together and see how it behaves. Hopefully uh, it'll work again. So I've returned that white seal to the top of the pump unit. I'm going to call it the pump unit. Um, not that it's uh, not that it's working that well. I don't think because I think that's maybe where the where the uh, fluid initially came through to um, to contaminate the uh, everything. But uh, for now, let's uh, return to its proper place and I shall reassemble now and put everything back and see how it behaves so the little speaker unit is back in place the motors back in place and held in place by the pump mechanism and the four screws are also back in place now the, uh, the three short ones go here here and here and then the longer screw goes down there which you can't well maybe you can just see a glimmer of reflection of it so that's back in the nozzle for the dispensing is is also back in place properly that's got a little bit of um, glue holding the, the sensor in so everything seems to be back in place now so just the the pulley now needs to be returned to there and yep that's the right way up both these belts appear to be the same length and uh, so I put those back on need both hands for that so both the belts are, are now back in place And I can actually test it now before I reassemble the top. So um, I'll try it dry first of all and uh, just make sure that the motor and the pulleys and everything are, are turning properly. And then I'll put some, put some water or something in there just to uh, see if it'll dispense dispense that first of all so four NSL batteries good old Radio Shack I still have some Radio Shack batteries in stock and uh, I heard it make a noise a moment ago so let's see what happens when we break the beam yeah that seems to be functioning Okay, so everything appears to be doing what it's supposed to. Um, so now I'll put some water back in it and see if it'll dispense the water. Um, I think I'm going to turn that off initially so it doesn't go everywhere by accident because as soon as you break that beam it's going to start pumping liquid out. So it appears to be working apart from the fact I think what happens with water is it's not viscous enough to stay in the tube 
and it probably siphons itself back into the main container. It's trying to pump the water out. Yeah, I think the problem is that the water is just not viscous enough. Just bear in mind this is really a um, liquid soap dispenser. But the mechanism is working. So I'm going to reassemble it and put some liquid soap in there and uh, give it another test with some liquid soap. Well, I've put some soap, some liquid soap in it now. Um, I haven't filled it right up to the the maximum line. That could be one of the problems. If you overfill, it could well spill out over into the uh, mechanism. So I think it's advisable to probably only half fill it or fill it two thirds, something like that. So now there's some viscous liquid soap in there and see see how that uh, performs instead of the um, the water because I think the water is just too thin for it to function properly so here we go this is <laughs> this is going to be tricky I'm going to have to use both hands to turn it on okay so it's on and Make sure I get the glass underneath to catch, capture anything that's going to come out. Ooh, nothing. Oh, ah, there we go. Even got the chime. Yeah, there we go. That works nicely. Drips a little. But it works and um, just as I suspected it, it needed a, a more viscous liquid for the liquid to not siphon itself back into the reservoir so it works well with a, um, a viscous or more, more, more viscous material I don't think the additional the additional no, oh, there we go. I didn't think the additional drips of uh, of, of liquid salt would be very good because they they're going to accumulate on the uh, on the counter or wherever this is placed. But um, yeah, it's it's functioning, so I think we'll call that a win. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos thanks again bye for now